stories about Arab Americans and the contributions they made to American society. I have up here an um, image of a recent book that I had the pleasure to review for a journal. Um, it's about the rise of the Arab American left. And the reason why I have that book up there is when I read the uh, preface of the book, it's actually by a professor at the University of Michigan Dearborn campus, Pamela Pennick. And I was really impressed by the fact that what motivated her to write this book is she teaches a course on the history of political activism at the university, and she realized that all of the materials that she had and that she was, had access to never mentioned Arab Americans. She couldn't find a source where she could have her students see themselves in American history. So it led her to start researching what exists out there. What do we know about Arab American activism? And so she, she read this book, she wrote this book, which just recently came out. So there's a, a positive. But the, the, and that's in a college. But you think about K through 12. Where, where do kids see themselves in the curriculum? It's oftentimes they're, they're absent. They don't see themselves. They don't learn about Arab culture very rarely. Uh, I talked a lot about media. This is just a reference to the um, video games now that kids play. That's a new kind of media that we have to be aware of. Um, video games that you buy and you play on PlayStation, for example, or even computer games. Oftentimes the bad guys are Arabs. And so, again, it's reinforcing this negative image. And then the last um, context I, wanted, I want to draw your attention to are these institutions that actually regulate our everyday life. So something like going to an airport. Um, this is an image of a family, an entire family, including these children, who got kicked off of a flight in 2016 because they were Arab. Passengers were afraid of them. And you may have heard stories of others because they were speaking Arabic. They got kicked off of a flight. So, so, the, you know, so these are the different contexts, possible contexts, in which children are having, and our youth are having uh, encounters in which they have relationships where they may be facing <coughs> these kinds of incidents. So that's why we should care um, about this topic. Uh, because it's, it's happening more and more in ways that um, I think haven't been so visible in the past in terms of the American public. In, in the past, people didn't really know what an Arab was or what Islam was. And today, people know it and they think they understand what it is, but of course, everything they know about it is negative. So we're, we're sort of in a, in a new phase. So what can we do to cope? What, what kind of strategies can we use to help our youth? Um, I'm going to talk about a few different strategies. I want to talk about stories, the kinds of stories that we can have access to. I want to talk about the importance of sharing with our youth the, the culture and the history um, that we know about Arab civilization and all the contributions that Arab civilization has made to the current day society in the US. Um, I'm also going to talk about the importance of role models, and I want to present to you also um, the idea of community events, um, the idea that we need to make sure our youth um, are enmeshed in community events. And all of this, of course, is with the understanding that this builds a strong identity, a strong cultural identity. And when youth have a strong cultural identity, they are able to weather prejudice and discrimination in ways that are just phenomenal because they know who they are and from where they come, and they're not as affected by the negativity out there. So in terms of stories, um, Arab American stories, has anyone ever heard of The Sandwich Swap? It's such a great book, and let me tell you why it's a great book. It was actually written by um, an author here in Michigan. Her name's Kelly DiPuccio, and she um, collaborated with Queen Rania of Jordan. But why I love this story, it, I'll tell you. So it's a story about Lily and Selma. They're uh, two friends, they're best friends, they do everything together, and they bring their lunch to school. And um, of course they bring different lunches. Selma brings a hummus sandwich, and Lily brings a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And um, one day they just, they don't, they've never seen this food before. You know, Selma didn't grow up with peanut butter jelly, Lily didn't grow up with hummus, and so they start, make, because they don't know what it is, they start making fun of it because they don't feel comfortable about it. And so then they get into a big fight, and then ultimately they make up, and how they make up is they try each other's food and they end up loving it. You know, um, Lily loves the hummus, she can't believe she never had it before. Selma loves the peanut butter and jelly, can't believe she never had it before, and then they're friends again. 
But why this story is so important is that it's not just about Arab Americans. It's not just about Arab culture. It's about Arab Americans vis-a-vis -vis American culture. It's showing Arab Americans as part of the American mosaic. And that's so important to be able to present inclusion and acceptance and understand that Arab Americans are American. They're part of American society. They're, they have unique cult cultures and strong cultures and beautiful cultures, but it's still part of America. And it's part of what makes America strong. So this, this book is, not, is, is, I think, a strength because it talks about Arab Americans as an American story, not just as an Arab story. Um, Arab contributions to civilization. I mean, there's so much that Arab culture has contributed to modern day society. Um, Arabs are, have, they invented algebra. The Arabic numeral system had a zero. It allowed mathematicians to solve complex problems that they couldn't do before. That's because of Arab culture. In terms of astronomy, it's the Arabs who discovered degrees that allowed us to be able to identify longitude and latitude for understanding the globe. It also allowed for the study of the uh, speed of sound and the speed of light. Those are not just simple things. Those are profound contributions that have taken us to where we are today. And having our youth know about that history, that that's the culture that they come from, is empowering. So we need to be able to share that information with them. Um, it's the Arabs who discovered the magnetic needle that allowed, to the ever, that allowed for the invention of the ever-valuable compass. Think about, that. where would we be with navigation without that? Um, in the 10th century, it was an Arab who wrote about optics. And that information has let, laid the foundation for the development of the microscope and the telescope. Think about how valuable those things are. Um, contributions to music. The bagpipe may look all familiar to you. We oftentimes in the US associate it with British culture. But this was actually an instrument that the Crusaders discovered in Palestine among Arab shepherds. And then they took it back and it became associated with the British Isles, but it's actually got its origins in Arab culture. So there are so many levels at which Arab culture has um, contributed that our youth need to know about. Another really strong and effective means to helping our youth um, develop strong identities is presenting role models. Um, I have he up here just a few examples that were taken from a um, organization that's called Arab America. Some of you may be familiar with it. But in 2016, they highlighted 25 um, Arab Americans who stole the spotlight. And I just have three of them up here. One of them is an actor. He was the first Arab American to ever win a Emmy for uh, Best Actor in a Drama Series. Rami Malek is his name. I don't know if you know the show he's in, um, which is, I think, called Mr. Robot. Um, Emma Clooney may all look familiar to you. She's been in the, in, in the news a lot. Um, but she's a human rights lawyer who fights for dignity and humanity. Very, very respectable and valuable contribution to the world. Um, Dr. Huda Zogbi, who actually um, won the, um, the richest award in science called the Breakthrough Prize, and it's for the work that she's done on um, brain disorders. So these, these are not small things. These are huge contributions, role models, and, and these are individuals who are proud of who they are. They tell people that they're Arab American. That, and, that, and that's one of the things that's important. That's why I'm, I'm talking about being proud of who you are and being willing and um, able to share that with people who are different than you so that people get to know who is an Arab American, that it's not just these negative images you get in the media, but Arab Americans are everyday people, and they're making great contributions to our society. And of course, being in Michigan, Southeast Michigan, which is home to the largest, most visible concentration of Arab Americans in the country, we have a lot of local role models that we can hold up. Abdullah Hamoud representative for uh, the city of Dearborn to the state of Michigan. He won against his, against his opponent by 62%. It's 
It's very impressive. And if you've ever heard him talk about the issues that he's passionate about, he's quite impressive. Um, uh, Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha, she was the whistleblower about for the Flint water crisis. So talk about a human issue, human rights issue, contributing to society, to the well-being of society, to the quality of life. She's amazing. And then um, this Andrew Bazzi, who I just recently learned about from my kids. I had never heard of him before, but apparently he's a native of Dearborn and has risen to great um, R&B fame as a singer. You can hear him on the radio. Um, but he, these are all local people that we can that we can point to our kids and say, look what these Arab Americans are doing. And then of course the community events. Um, and I think this is probably more relevant for people who live outside of the community than it is for people who are from the community. But moving out of Dearborn or Dearborn Heights is something very important to do because it gets Arab Americans more integrated with other cultures. But that doesn't mean that you, for, you don't ever come back to the community. Having ties with the community is extremely important for developing a strong cultural identity. So whether that happens through a regular attendance at church or mosque, and I don't mean for the religious teaching, I mean for the ethnic camaraderie, for, get, for being around people who are similar to you. Um, festivals. Festivals are really strong um, resources for uh, youth to be able to mingle and get to know who they are from, from where they come, with the food and the music, um, weddings, even funerals. It's important for our youth to come to the funerals so they can see what the community is like at these These, these are life events. These are human events. They have a cultural element to them. Let kids experience what that is. And then, of course, we're in the Arab American Museum. I mean, 